So hello, I I heard that I'm live. It's uh, kind of weird. It's my first solo talk uh, in a virtual conference, so it's kind of weird to have an audience and you don't know kind of um, who who is who's in there and 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 who's listening. Um, so hello, my name is Adrian. I'm the founder and CEO of Spielworks. We're the makers of Wombat and Wombplay. And today I want to talk to you about um, how you can supercharge traditional games, and specifically mobile games, with crypto-based rewards. I'll, um, I'll share my screen. So, um, yeah, we've, we've launched OnePlay. Um, this is a new loyalty rewards platform for gamers about three months ago. And I want to share some insights about um, how you can actually reward um, gamers with crypto rewards and uh, what, what you gain from it uh, from a from a game perspective, so how your main KPIs change. So what we're gonna be talking about is, uh, first of all, I'll explain to you how OnePlay works and um, like what it is, what people can do. And next on, um, kind of in this first part, we're gonna be diving into um, how the crypto rewards actually work and how we're able to pay out um, real crypto and liquid assets to users who don't have anything to do with crypto or blockchain at all. Um, and then in the second part, I wanna dive into what our key observations are so far from the first three months of operations and um, what the impact is on key metrics that you see and that you typically measure when you, when you run a game. Um, this mostly going into like the three categories of anything related to conversions anything related to spending in games and anything related to retention. And in the end, you'll also have opportunity to, to uh, uh, put up questions and um, I'll happily answer them, of course. So let, let's dive right into it. Um, so what is what is OnePlay? OnePlay, um, as I said already, is a gaming rewards platform. So effectively, users basically just sign up um, they sign up on our website. It's a web-based platform. Um, it's mobile first because we're focusing on mobile games right now. So users just go to oneplay.io and they sign up with their social account like Google or Facebook. Um, and they can browse um, the games that, they, that, that we have available. Um, that's quite a bunch already, but we're constantly adding more. Um, and they can choose a game to download. There's also a few HTML5 games, but I, I don't want to dive too deep into that. So essentially it's mostly about downloadable mobile games. So they download a game, they receive a virtual currency. It's not a blockchain based currency. It's just um, kind of an in-game on platform currency that's called Wombux. And these Wombux, they, they can then use to redeem for EOS, like for e real EOS cryptocurrency in weekly cash out events. In order to join these cash out events, they need to create an EOS account, which we do automatically for them in the background. And then they can receive the EOS in their Wombat wallet and can start using it right away. Right. So the cool thing is that um, we try to reduce the friction here for, for users who are entirely new to the crypto space. So they can basically work with the things that they've had at hand in the, in the traditional world but they're at the same time receiving crypto-based rewards or blockchain-based rewards. Um, so this is what it looks like. This is, the, um, this is the, the desktop view. Obviously, like I said, we're mobile first. I don't wanna like bore you too much with, um, with like, what the platform actually looks like, um, but what's, uh, what's key here is that um, we're actually offering any kind of games, any kind of mobile games, so they, the games themselves, they don't need to be blockchain related or blockchain powered or run on the blockchain. We do have some blockchain games, like you can see Upland, but we mo we're mostly focusing on non-blockchain traditional mobile games like uh, Hero Zero, Big Farm, Forge of Empires, like really big titles. So why is it so cool to, to pay out crypto rewards as opposed to vouchers, right? Because there's obviously uh, a bunch of platforms who, um, who offer rewards to users for playing games. And um, what we think is really cool about, about blockchain rewards for crypto and particularly EOS is that 
we can settle, we can pay out the rewards worldwide, pretty much at no cost. It's very, very cheap on the EOS blockchain. They get transferred in instantaneously. So it takes probably about a second or two for them to receive, for, for users to receive their rewards. And we can transfer tiny amounts. So that can be a tenth of a cent. It can be a hundredth of a cent. Um, so the, the smallest amount you can possibly send over the EOS blockchain in EOS currency is about um, a hundredth of a cent or slightly more. So that's, um, that's tiny little amounts that we can, um, that we can uh, send at very low cost. So we can basically reward our users on an ongoing basis rather than have them um, have them collect uh, thousands and, or millions of some virtual points in order to then receive um, a $2 or $1 Amazon voucher or whatever. Um, the only thing that's unfortunate or inconvenient for us about this is that um, as soon as we've sent the rewards, we can't get them back, right? So even if we sent a tiny little amount and we realized that this was wrong, um, well, that's blockchain, right? We can't, we can't get it back. So let's dive a little bit deeper into how that actually works. So how do we pay crypto to, to these users who are playing non-blockchain games, right? So um, first of all, we need to know what users have done, right? So we need to know whether they've downloaded a game. We need to know whether they've signed up. Um, we need to have them or we need to measure um, certain activity in their games. Um, for instance, um, playtime, um, for instance, uh, logins, for instance, um, reaching certain milestones in certain games, like, um, for instance, uh, level, uh, reaching level 30 in Empire Four Kingdoms or um, whatever it is, right? Um, completing a tutorial. Um, so this kind of information is what we're using to actually reward users. Um, and um, we obviously need to get that information somehow. And uh, for, for blockchain games, that's mostly straightforward. So we can basically just look it up on the blockchain if people have done something. Um, but with traditional games, it's like not that obvious. And we're basically using attribution networks mostly. We sometimes build um, uh, proprietary solutions for, the, for these games but mostly we're using attribution networks like Adjust or AppsFlyer, um, where we basically can, uh, can send the, the users through and um, we get uh, callbacks for all these events or for, for certain activities that they do. So now that, we, now that we know what people are doing, what, you, what our users are doing in these games, we basically award them with one box, right? So for instance, um, we pay them about 10 one bucks per minute playtime in, in certain games. We, <clears throat> we reward them with 15,000 one bucks for reaching a certain milestone in Forge of Empires. We can reward them with one bucks for um, in-game purchases. Um, and um, yeah, for the blockchain games, we actually see when they've completed certain actions, like for, for example, playing, um, a wood or bronze or gold game in solitaire duel or, or making a race in, um, in EOS racing for buying something, buying a property in Upland. So all, all these, all these things that is, um, is what we reward. Um, and then once they've reached, once they've collected a few one bucks, um, it, there's basically no lower limit, um, to, to how many one bucks they need. Users can actually then participate in weekly cash out events, and these cash out events um, they basically uh, run like like I said weekly every Friday, and um, there we pay out. Right now it's a thousand five hundred dollars every week um, in EOS to anyone who participates, and um, every participant receives um, the respective share of the one thousand five hundred dollars. Um, based on the total number of one bucks contributed to the cash out event and the number of, co of one bucks they've contributed themselves. So basically it's just a, the fraction of, um, of the, like, or their share of the total one bucks contributed. 
So this is important. Um, this is important to understand yeah, because when, once we dive into the metrics, um, it's it's really necessary to know kind of that we have this one box um, in, in direction uh, so that uh, we can talk a little bit about, about um, what makes sense to incentivize, right? Um, so yeah, let's let's dive right into it. Um, so it, as I said earlier, um, we've been running one play for about three months, so we have about that much data. It's not super much, but um, like you could say, it would be nicer to have a few years. Of course, we will have a few years in a few years. Um, but I think that it's worth talking about it because there are some trends that we already see that are very encouraging and um, told us or are telling us that we're onto something and that actually paying uh, paying users with crypto or incentivizing um, gamers with cryptocurrency is actually something that's very, very attractive to them and that, that they that they are actually hunting for it, right? Um, we've, we've been evaluating here, uh, that's not all users, but um, mo like a, a good portion of our users, we've been evaluating about 150,000 for, for these metrics and for these measurements. Um, and it's important to understand that we have users from all over the world, literally from all over the world, right? Um, OnePlay is only available in English language, so there, there is a, a bit of, an, of, language, of a language barrier um, for many, many regions in the world, but we still manage to, um, to um, acquire users from about 190 countries or, or smaller regions. Um, what's funny is that we can already see, um, based on based on this first data, that certain games are particularly popular in certain regions, right? So what we've seen is um, that uh, our puzzle match three games and so on are particularly popular in part in some parts of Asia. So particularly in um, Vietnam, in um, the Philippines, in Indonesia. Um, we see a lot of interest in those games. Um, and uh, the strategy in RPG games that we have, they are mostly popular in North America and Europe. Um, and this is something that um, we'll also have to keep in mind right now uh, for the metrics that I'll, I'll be showing that's not entirely relevant. Um, but um, yeah, for, for, for us, that's going to be interesting going forward, obviously. So let's now look at... Um, what we can see in terms of conversion rates. So um, first of all, we have about a 20 to 25% conversion rate for click to install. So about a quarter of all users who click on a game actually do install the game, um, right? So um, I think that's that's about average. There's no, like, that's not, not particularly great. I think that, yeah, sure, if, if users are, um, are usually coming from um, from the outside world and um, they need to, to basically get through the entire funnel first. Um, it may be a little bit lower, but that's um, probably nothing spectacular. What's funny, however, uh, for us is um, that about 70% of all OnePlay users who download and install one game also download and install at least one other game or even more, right? We have tons of users installing um, like pretty much all games that are available on, on OnePlay. Um, obviously that's clear if you, if you look at the rewards that they're getting for um, already just installing the game. Um, but it's, uh, I think that's very interesting that we have a very high ratio of users um, who have installed at least one game to then install other games as well. Um, and what we see is that there is uh, not so high, but already visible, correlation between games of the same genre. I would probably expect that if you have played one strategy game, then you may be bored of strategy games and, and you might have found your, your, your strategy game already. But what we see is that um, specifically with strategy games, 56% of the people who, who download one strategy game also play at least one other strategy game. 
That's just an example. Whereas only 43% of these people who download at least one strategy game um, play other games. So we have a much more, much higher likelihood of users um, playing more strategy games or more games within a genre than um, cross genre. Um, sorry. Um, the next big portion that's very interesting for specifically ourselves and the publishers is um, what we see in terms of in-game spendings. So obviously the typical um, the typical uh, KPIs that you have are install or active to paying ratios. Um, there's um, like uh, average spend and so on. And obviously um, our data is not as long term, so we can't tell you, we can't really extrapolate what it's going to look like in, in five years, right? And that's going to be particularly interesting. But what we can see is that on average, we have a slightly above 5% install to paying ratio for each individual game, right? Um, like on average, um, on a game by game basis, um, that um, that varies between two and six percent, slightly above, um, above two and slightly above six percent um, uh, per game, um, and that we see that that correlates very heavily um, on how many rewards um, people or players can get within these games by watching ads. And the higher the rewards for ads, the um, um, the lower we generally see the install to paying ratio, which I think is very, very understandable. Um, the average in-game purchase size is about 10 euros 50, which we were actually surprised that, um, that this is like relatively high, to, despite the fact that the smallest purchases within the games are typically between one euro and, um, I mean, gross uh, revenue, right? Um, one euro gross and um, and like let's say three euros or three euros fifty, and here with the um, average in-game purchase, I I am actually talking about ten euros fifty net net publisher revenue. And another really interesting fact is um, we have games where we actually incentivize or where we incentivized purchases, um, so users would directly get. Uh, or would earn one bucks for spending money or making purchases within the games. Um, we had a short episode where we tried out really high rewards for in-game purchases, which um, kind of led to a bunch of fraud, um, which we then uh, did wanted to exclude. So we basically re significantly reduced the, uh, the incentives for uh, purchases within games. Um, and for some games, we removed them entirely. And what we were seeing that if there's just a small incentive, which would be about a cashback rate of below, let's say 5% effectively, um, if, if, if we incentivize purchases at very low rates like that, then incentivizing purchases doesn't make any difference um, uh, to, to how much how many people are spending money in games or how many people are buying uh, items in games. And um, yeah, so there's, there's basically no difference between incentivizing it or not, right? So what we, what we concluded or what we generally think of that is um, that um, players who spend money in games they do so because they want to play the game and they want to make progress in the game and not because they they get incentivized to do so, which like I find really funny. Um, with, with regards to the retention, which is probably the, the third big block that everybody's talking about, um, as I said, we can't um, we can't talk about the really long-term retentions, which are going to look um, probably totally different. Um, but what we've been looking at um, was uh, mostly because, like, we've been around for three months, so um, the the data that's beyond seven days effectively isn't very reliable. Um, but because our cohorts get small, obviously, 
But um, if we if we look at the retention for these short periods, we see really encouraging re retention rates, which I think is kind of understandable that people stick around for for pretty long if they get rewarded on an ongoing basis. Um, but we see that our second day retention, so after one day, if people log in um, on the next day after signing up, we see retention rates that are, depending on the game, between 40 and 50%. Um, we see three-day retentions, so basically after three days, um, of about 26 to 41%. And we see retention rates of um, about 20 to 25% after a week. And um, I just put up um, one benchmark, which is um, like, I mean, obviously I can't talk about individual games and, and the, the data for individual games um, because there's, there, they typically is, the, the, typically is their um, company secret, but um, their retention rates are generally, the, the second day retention is 34% uh, um, on average um, uh, for, for paid channels. Um, the three-day retention is 22%, and the seven-day retention is uh, 12%. So we're between 20 and 50% better, or, uh, or up to 100% better um, with regards to retention rates. Uh, like I said, the, the data will become much more reliable within the next couple of months, but um, that's, uh, that's a very first um, nice sign that we see. Um, there's, uh, I just put up um, a little bit of, a, of an example retention rate uh, curve for one game so that you can see kind of how that changes. So you see that um, it, it's actually above 50% um, above, uh, for, the, for the second day. And then it goes, uh, or no, it's, uh, yeah, I think on the second day, it's about 40% above and it goes down on the 20th day to about 13, 14% 13, um, and so on. All right, and that's uh, basically already it. Um, so um, just to wrap it up, um, after our three months of, um, of operations with OnePlay, um, we can see that um, a running incentives for people to play mobile games already after, already after three months um, has a significant impact on how they behave. So they try out all kinds of different games, right? So they stick around with, with our platform. Um, they generally stick with the games for a longer period than, than average paid channels. And um, they also spend at least slightly more on average within the games than, than uh, people acquired through, through other paid channels. All right. And, um, that's about it. Thanks a lot for watching. And um, I see that there is at least one question. If you want to put up more questions, then um, that's that's uh, a good occasion now. Um, otherwise, I'll dive into the, the this first one. So, um, it, so I understand that um, what I understand from, from the question is um, how users are actually getting incentivized um, by by small crypto. Uh, amounts. So um, the small crypto amounts, they actually um, stem from us giving, handing out these Wombucks and people being able to redeem those Wombucks for, for, um, for EOS once a week, right? So we put up $1,500 uh, um, in, in EOS every, every week and um, each each user can contribute all the one bucks that they have. And um, so for instance, if a user has earned 10,000 one bucks in a week and they put that into the cash out and there's 10 million one bucks um, in total, then this user with 10,000 one bucks will basically receive one thousandth of the total um, price pool or the reward pool. And um, that will be $1.50 in EOS at the end of the week. Right. So these amounts, depending on how many Wombucks people have earned uh, throughout a week, they can become rather juicy. Right. So we've had people earning 20, 30 euros um, a week, even because they've played so much. Um, but for some people who just have played a little bit, um, that can also be just a tenth of a cent. Um, so uh, there's a follow up question. Um, 
so what will happen in 2021? So there's um, there's a lot that we want to that we want to build. We basically just started out, right? Um, so we definitely will be adding more and more games. I think that um, with the numbers that we can present, um, it's very very interesting for all kinds of publishers. We ha were in very very go good talks with quite quite a lot of um, also big publishers, uh, mobile publishers, regarding um, regarding onboarding more games. So we obviously want to offer. Um, a wide variety of games, um, all kinds of genres and, and, and so on. There's um, also a whole lot of features that we're planning. So we want to um, make the entire OnePlay experience more fun all by itself. So people um, should get, um, should have more ways of actually, um, yeah, playing within OnePlay and, and um, it, supercharging their own um, their own uh, rewards, so they can earn even more by by making the right moves or, or putting up strategies for that. And um, there's also a few things that we want to do around um, around um, influencers and and affiliates and so on, because we've been asked whether we have an affiliate system. We currently don't have that yet. And um, yeah, what what's the biggest misconception about OnePlay? I think um, the biggest misconception <laughs> that we sometimes get faced with is um, that we sometimes look like a gambling site, which we're not. Um, so there's no money whatsoever that uh, users have to put up in order to start earning on OnePlay, right? It's not. It's got nothing to do with gambling. There's no random component in there, and I think that's actually quite funny that um, uh, if if people visit OnePlay for the first time and because of its name and um, maybe because of the reward pool that we have above the fold, sometimes some people think that um, this might be gambling because um, some of the gambling sites may may have similar uh, similar similar appearance. Um, and uh, yeah, it's, it's just, I think that's the funniest um, and, and biggest misconception that we have that we sometimes get faced with. And that's also something that, it, we're gonna we're gonna solve uh, throughout 2021. Okay, um, if there are no other questions, um, thanks a lot again for um, for having me, and um, happy well, was really happy to to be here, and and I hope that you found that interesting and uh, enjoy the CGC, and of course make sure to check out oneplay.io.